Hi, in today's video, I will explain you the difference when we define slab as a membrane and when we define slab as a shell element. Now, before we get into analysis and compare the results, let me explain you the basic difference. Now, a thick plate option is to be used for those mats which have a high thickness resulting in a span to depth ratio of about 6 or less. This special formulation takes into account transfer shear deformations in the element which could be important for thicker elements. Shell type property can be used when area object is likely to show in plane as well as out of plane deformation. Shear walls, general shells like domes should be modeled using this property. A membrane type property could be used when the area object exhibits only in plane deformation. For example, planar walls and floors which directly rest on beams can be modeled using membrane type property. For a beam slab system, shell element could also be used for floor modeling but in that case such an area object must be meshed in smaller finite element mesh and the relative stiffness of slab and beams will govern the load path. However, we suggest that for all walls, whether planar or 3D, use shell type property. For slabs directly resting on beams, use membrane type property and for flat slabs or those slabs where you wish to capture the slab bending and compute the forces in slabs from the program, use shell type property. Now on my screen you can see that I have made three completely identical models. All of these models have four 450mm by 450mm columns and four 230mm by 500mm beam and a slab on resting on them. On the extreme left you can see that I have defined slab as a S200 shell thin which means the thickness of the slab is 200mm and we have defined it as a shell thin element. In the middle we have defined slab as a membrane element and on the extreme right side we have defined slab as a shell element but along with that we have provided some bending modifiers and some torsion modifiers to slab and beam respectively. Now let's talk about the slab on the extreme right hand side where we have defined slab as a shell thin element and along with that you can see to the slab I have provided some bending stiffness modifiers and along with that on the beams I have provided some property modifiers for torsion. This is so that the slab acts as a membrane and transfers all the loads to the beams. Now before we get into analysis, let me explain you a simple feature of ETABS. Now ETABS automatically recognizes if there is a beam resting on a slab and if the slab needs to be divided or not. To demonstrate this, we'll draw a beam from this edge to this edge. We'll go to set display options. We'll click on shell analysis mesh and press OK. To check, we'll go to object shrink toggle you can see that ETABS has automatically divided the slab into two pieces now for example if the beam is not in a straight line and is irregular hence resulting in an irregular distribution of the slab like this you can see when we click on shrink toggle that ETABS has divided the slabs into four nearest trapezoidal or triangular shapes Although this is incorrect, if the beam is irregular and if the slab is irregular, then the slab needs to be defined as a shell element. Now let's talk about the slab where we have defined the slab as a shell thin. The user needs to remember when we define slab as a shell thin, the meshing needs to be assigned. To do that, we'll select the slab, we'll go to assign, we'll go to shell, floor auto mesh options and we'll select the option whichever is convenient for us. We'll press OK, then we'll go to shell analysis mesh under set display options. We'll press OK and you can see that the meshing has been assigned. Now before we begin with the analysis, let me show you that I have applied a dead load of 1 ton per meter square and a live load of 0.3 ton per meter square to all of these slabs. Now let's run the model and compare the bending moment and axial forces. Now we'll go to display forces stress diagrams and we'll go to frame pier and then for the case we'll select for dead load and for the moment 3 3 and we'll press ok on your screen you can see the bending moment diagram now remember on the left hand side we have defined slab as a shell thin element in the middle we have slab defined as a membrane and on the right hand side we have defined slab as a shell thin element along with that we have provided bending stiffness modifiers to the slab and torsion modifiers to the beam so that slab acts as a membrane and transfers all the load to the beams you can see when the slab was defined as a shell element on the left hand side that the beam is experiencing a maximum moment of 8.9025 ton per meter and when the slab was defined as a membrane the beam is experiencing a maximum moment of 11.12 ton per meter and when the slab was defined as a shell element along with bending stiffness modifiers the beam is experiencing a maximum moment of 11.48 which is quite similar to as of membrane. Now to check the final results we'll check the axial forces in, in the columns. We'll go to display. 
We'll select the axial force for dead load and press OK. We'll go to elevation and we'll select the elevation. You can see that all of the columns are experiencing exactly the same force of minus 20.0716 ton. Hence, it concludes that it is up to the user whether he or she wants to define slab as a shell element or as a membrane. If the slab is irregular, then the slab has to be defined as a shell element and the meshing has to be defined to the slab. But if the user wishes that all of the loads get transferred from slab to beams, then the user can apply bending stiffness modifiers to slab and beam. Now IS16700 states that slab has to be modeled as a shell but for low height buildings the code does not recommend anything. Hence the user can decide. There is no harm in defining your slab as a shell element but if you are assigning your slab as a shell element then the slab has to be designed based on FEM analysis and not as per the coefficients given in IS456. Thank you.